Right, so these metal carbon anions have negative charge centred on the metal. That means that they are metal-centred bases, or if you like, metal-centred nucleophiles. So you're used to drawing a lone pair of electrons on a heteroatom and having it reacting as a base or as a nucleophile in your reaction mechanisms and per pushing Cauley arrows. There's no fundamental difference here. We're talking about a pair of electrons centred on our transition metal. And if we have a pair of electrons centred on our transition metal, then it's going to act as a base. And if it acts as a base, it will attract protons. Yeah. So you can then take these metal carbonyl anions and you can protonate these metal carbonyl anions. And when you protonate these metal carbonyl anions, then what you will make, will be on the slide or two, are metal carbonyl hydrides. These species here are bases. But how strong a base they are depends on the electron density on the metal centre. Just like how strong a base uh, butyl lithium is versus t-butyl lithium depends on the electron density on the carbon center. And so if you have a group that pumps electron density into the metal center, you make the metal center more basic. If you have a group that can remove electron density from the metal center, you make the metal center less basic. So a carbonyl ligand is an electron withdrawing ligand. So if you have an anion like this one here, cobalt tetracarbonyl anion. So cobalt tetracarbonyl anion is described here as the most stable and the least basic. What that means is there is formally a pair of electrons on the cobalt centre, but each one of those carbonyl ligands is withdrawing that electron density from the cobalt centre, meaning that cobalt tetracarbonyl is actually a really very weak base. Formally it's a base, but it's a very weak base because the carbonyl ligands are removing the electron density from the metal centre. Now, if you replace one of those carbonyl ligands with a better donor, something that increases the electron density on the metal centre, you make your metal centre a stronger base. So we make the metal centre a stronger base. So very simply in this table here, we want a lot of examples on this table, but if this is a relatively weak base with a relative, there's no particular scale here, this is just a relative basicity. If you have a cobalt tetracarbonyl anion, that has a relative basicity of one. If you have iron and replace, uh, so you're going from cobalt to iron, and if we replace the CO ligands with a CP ligand, you know what a CP ligand is, but we'll talk about it more, a CP ligand is a much better donor and a much poorer acceptor. So it massively increases the basicity. How massively? By a factor of 70 million. So we have a 70 million fold increase in the basicity of the metal center, essentially just by switching ligands. So the nature of the ligand has a massive influence on the basicity of the metal center. The more electron donating, the stronger the base, the more electron withdrawing, the weaker the base. Now remember the relationship between basicity and acidity. So if you take a species like sulfuric acid, now sulfuric acid is a very strong acid. Why is sulfuric acid a very strong acid? Well, the easiest way to understand why sulfuric acid is a very strong acid is because if you deprotonate it, you have a negative charge here. What can we do with that negative charge? We can delocalize it. And so the reason sulfuric acid is such a strong acid is actually because it's a very, its conjugate base is very weak. Weak conjugate basicity means that the conjugate acid is going to be very strong. And if you have a very weak conjugate acid, that means you have a very strong conjugate base. So there is an inverse relationship between those two things. What that means, of course, is if we are able to protonate our cobalt tetracarbonyl anion, if we can protonate our tet cobalt tetracarbonyl anion, is it going to be a strong acid or a weak acid? Cobalt tetracarbonyl is going to be a very, very strong acid. And the reason that cobalt tetracarbonyl is a very, very strong acid is because when that proton dissociates, the negative charge that is left behind is dissociated 
and it's dissociated and distributed across all of the carbonyl ligands. So because the carbonyl ligands are electron withdrawing, they're delocalizing that negative charge.